We'll swap over here to the Mariners here who continue with uh, international signings um, as their offseason continues, a, a critical offseason as we talked about. Seattle signed six additional international signings after last uh, last week's pretty important class, including infielder Gustavo Beltran, infielder Alexander Garcia, outfielder Gene Gutierrez, right-handed pitcher Jeter Martinez, right-handed pitcher Jose Romero, and right-handed pitcher Dylan Wilson. So we'll go over these guys here, give you some updates on them, as opposed to just telling you their names. Uh, Beltran's a 17-year-old, five foot eight infielder with a strong frame. He's a plus runner with a compact swing, and primarily plays the second base spot. Garcia is a 17-year-old who's a five foot eleven infielder with uh, being a plus athlete, playing multiple positions around the diamond. He has raw strength and an aggressive approach at the plate with a good amount of range on defense. Uh, Gutierrez is 17, six foot one, uh, with a physical frame. He's an above average athlete with raw power and solid speed. He does profile as a power hitter at the plate uh, with some solid arm strength. Martinez is a 16 year old. Bill, we're talking about a 16 year old. That's crazy. Six, six foot four. Hey man, you know, <laughs> uh, a right-handed pitcher. He's got a smooth delivery with good direction and a solid repertoire across the board. He's an above average strike thrower. That's the name of the game. If you can throw strikes, you're going to get called up. Uh, Jose Romero is an 18 year old, six foot one right-hander with an aggressive mentality on the mound. He has a solid breaking ball and presents velocity around the low nineties at the current point in time, finishing up with Dylan Wilson, who you see on your screen. He's a 17 year old, six foot right-hander with a long and athletic build. He's got plus mechanics and utilizes his whole body well. Uh, his standout weapon is his curveball, which has a chance to be an above-average pitch that induces several swings and misses. So that's uh, more sort of development there for the Mariners. Again, we talk, you look at the international signings and you wonder why they're important. Look at a guy like Julio. He was an international signing and now he's doing what he's doing now. I'm not saying any of these guys will live up to that, but that's why these international signings are so important. Um, there's some roster moves here. The team claimed right-handed pitcher J.B. Bukowskis off of waivers from the Diamondbacks. Um, and because of adding him to the 40-man waiver uh, uh, roster, pardon me, they had to uh, designate Alberto Rodriguez uh, for assignment and effectively put him on waiver. So that's why that's that. I said waiver there. It slipped out. My mind was ahead of it there. Um, <laughs> another interesting, I mean, not like Bukowskis was all that interesting. He got uh, dealt with some injuries last year. So uh, not too much there. Uh, the Mariners did make a free agent signing, but it wasn't necessarily anybody that was on the radar. Uh, on the 19th, the team assigned infielder Tommy LaStella to a one-year deal. Uh, Jerry DePoto had a quote about LaStella here uh, to give you some insight on why the Mariners decided to bring him in. Tommy's makeup, instincts, and experience in winning environments will benefit our team as we look to make the next step. We value his versatility and strike zone management skills, as well as what I believe to be a high baseball IQ. Uh, La Stella is 33 years old. He's appeared in nine major league seasons with Atlanta, uh, the Cubs, and the Angels, uh, as a, in addition to Oakland and San Francisco most recently. In 667 career games, the left-handed hitting infielder is batting 267 with 207 runs, 97 doubles, 5 triples, 40 homers, 204 RBIs, and 172 walks. Because of Lestella being added to the 40-man roster, just like Bukowskis, um, left-handed pitcher Justice Sheffield was designated for assignment. Lestella is an interesting pickup. I mean, it's not like, again, anything that was out of the ordinary here. There wasn't much of a sample size in 2022 to go over um, on a Giants team that will look much different this year. Um, it's nice to add veterans. I mean, it's going to primarily be a bench bat. Might be some help for the corner infield here as you need a guy who's going to be able to back, back up Ty France in case of anything. Same with Gino. Um so again, I don't see too much happening there. With it's not like this is an impact signing, but you look at what Depoto said with him, you know, adding experience in a winning environment and versatility. The Mariners always look for versatility. Um, so when you look at these free agents, right? If someone's like strictly one part of the field, probably won't be a Mariner. Honestly, you know, you got look at look at across uh, outside of ex ex exceptions here and there. Right. I know that when Ty France was starting with the Mariners in 2021, he was playing second base. I know he plays corner, uh, corner infield. Colton Wong can play, uh, you know, around the infield there. JP's primarily a shortstop, you know, primarily third, uh, third base. Uh, Dylan Moore, look at Dylan Moore, look at guys like Sam Haggerty. It's all versatility right there. Right. So 
versatility is going to be something that the Mariners organization prioritizes a lot of the time, you know. So there is that. Uh, just a gentle reminder to you that Mariners and catchers, pitchers report, uh, pitchers and catchers eh? report <laughs> on the 16th of February. So we're getting closer there. It's it's pretty wild to think about it. You know, it just feels like the other day or a week ago that we were the season was ending and we're doing our recap and then we're getting into the cold winter of free agency. We're getting pretty close to pitchers and catchers reporting. Who knows? Maybe we see another move uh, from this front office to acquire another big name.